Good evening, and welcome to tonight's Trojan Talk. Here we are. Good evening again, <laughs> welcome to Trojan Talk. Uh, my name is Troy Roth, I'm the superintendent of Finley City Schools. And I'm Krista Miller, the assistant superintendent of Finley City Schools. Welcome. All right, with us tonight, we'll have a few special guests. Right now, joining us is uh, Principal Eric Payne from Northview and Principal Dr. Jennifer Tice uh, from Bigelow Hill. We'll hear from uh, both of them here shortly as, as we move on in the program. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, review last week's Trojan Talk. Last week, we unveiled the Trojan Academy, which is our online option for, for students who uh, have chosen that path, uh, who are uh, concerned about returning to school in any, any capacity, or who are, are just looking for an online option. Uh, I would encourage parents, students, uh, if you have not watched last week's Trojan Talk, a, a very well put together presentation on what the Trojan Academy will look like. Uh, that is available at, on our website, as is all our Trojan Talks uh, from the past. Uh, you can go back and watch any of those if you are still inclined to do so. Um, so uh, I think I'll turn it over to Crystal Miller here and talk a little bit about uh, what that online option looks like. Sure, just a review from last week. We thought maybe it was worth hearing it again um, to make certain that there's still questions out there. It is a, a fully online curriculum. It is an online curriculum that is more self-paced than what you would find if we were coming into school and we went remote and read how that will be conducted um, with the interaction with the teacher versus being solely online um, option. There are modules that your students will work through, but they will not be, they won't be in it alone. There will be a facilitator or a coach that is a Finley City Schools teacher in order to help and support them. And if there's areas where they need extra help, we'll make certain that we, we strive to match match your student up with somebody that can give them some very prescribed help. They, it is a program that includes um, some assessment tools so that that, pro, that education, their, their platform will be very prescribed, their instruction will be very prescribed. Um, so we're very excited to unveil that. We're, we're real proud of what we were able to put together for our online learners and we did extend the deadline. Yes. Did you mention that? I did not. We did extend the deadline until Sunday the 16th um, just to give parents, once we were able to get this information to you as to what the hybrid and remote will look like, we wanted to make certain we were giving you time to make a very educated decision about how you wanted to send your student back to us. So you will have until Sunday. Um, anything else on that? And I'll go into preschool a little bit. No, I think that's it. And you can go ahead and mention preschool here. All right. So on behalf of our little littles, we did want to let you know that more information will be coming out. We will get uh, the principal of the preschool, Kathy Young, in here in the not-too-distant future. But we did want to let you know that the preschool letters did go out. Um, that just once you receive that letter, that gives you all the information to call and make an appointment, um, to schedule an appointment to meet the teacher and, and, and have those discussions. Um, they will be following the same alert levels as what Finley City Schools and Millstream are following. So how it looks for us is also how that's going to look for preschool. And make certain to go like the Washington Facebook page because that's where they're going to provide a lot of updates. Um, so that's a little bit there on preschool and we'll go into more detail in the next couple of weeks in Trojan Talk. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. Absolutely, Mr. Roth. All right. Moving on, last night the Finley City School Board of Education uh, approved several items. Uh, this allowed us to move forward with the plans for the 2021 school year. Uh, some of the items that were approved last night were approved last night include our remote learning plan, uh, our online learning platform. Uh, you know, the remote learning plan will be submitted to the state, has been submitted to the state. Uh, that deadline was August 21st, but we needed board approval before we submitted that online learning plan uh, to the state, so we have done that. Uh, also last night, uh, the Board of Education approved the Finley City Schools reopening plan. Uh, they also approved our Millstream Career Center reopening plan. And this was all based on and also approved last night was the Hancock County Health Reopening, Hancock County Health Department Reopening Agreement. Uh, those those uh, documents are available on our website for you to review. Uh, you can take a look at those at any time, uh, but we will discuss those here, here shortly. But uh, with board approval last night, it allowed us to come into Trojan Talk tonight and discuss our reopening plan. Uh, Mr. White, you can go ahead and bring up that graphic. All right, some of you have seen this before. This is the uh, Finley Sk City Schools reopening plan uh, for the 2021 school year. You can see it's based on the governor's alert levels uh, throughout, throughout the state and uh, how it pertains to Hancock County and the opening of Finley City Schools. Uh, 
you know, an alert level yellow is the lowest level, which we have not been for some period of time now, but at alert level yellow, uh, Hancock Public Health and Finley City Schools would be recommending a traditional opening to the school five days a week with full capacity. Uh, like I said, as you know, we are not at this level. Uh, we are currently at the alert level orange or level two. Uh, being at level two, we've worked with the health department and with county schools. And at alert, alert level orange, uh, we are going to have a two-day split uh, for our students. Uh, students with the last name A through K will attend in session in their building Monday through Tuesday. Wednesday will be a remote day for all our students uh, with the possibility of bringing in very small groups for specialized services. Uh, this may not start uh, right away, but uh, if, if we're staying in a remote option, those options will be available on Wednesdays for small groups uh, to come in for some interaction with staff. And on Thursday and Friday, uh, students with the last name beginnings with the letters L through Z uh, will attend in person on Thursday and Friday. Uh, now we do know this may not be a perfect split and there may be some issues with parents where uh, a Monday, Tuesday doesn't work as well as a Thursday, Friday. If you have those situations, we encourage you to contact your building principal and they will work with you to, to put your student in the best possible situation and the best two days of the week that work for them. Or if you have a family maybe where students have you know two different last names but you need your family group together, we'll make certain that we make that happen. Yes, absolutely. There will be some exceptions yeah. and some issues, but uh, we just encourage you to work through your building principal to, to uh, have a choice or to, to have the days of the week that work best for you and your family. Uh, if we do go to alert level red, uh, we would implement a fully remote model uh, where students would no longer be coming to the building on Monday, Tuesdays, or Thursdays and Fridays. Uh, students will be expected to attend school via their provided device. Uh, for most students, that would be a Chromebook. Uh, for the lower, lower levels, this may be an iPad. Uh, still working through some of those issues. Uh, we're modeling a school day in order to provide structure and accountability, and we'll allow uh, our two principals here to talk about that uh, and let them explain what that school, school day may look like. If we do go to alert level purple, uh, there would be no one in the buildings and uh, would not be a good situation for, for us health-wise uh, and we would be shut down and be totally remote. Um, in that alert level red, we still would have the opportunity um, reducing the small group size to six or under, but we have, um, it is recommended and, and safely recommended by the health department that we could bring in for uh, whether it be mental health services, whether it would be IEPs, whether it would be some other different things that we could do in small groups in order to still provide some support. Again, that will we'll work that out as we, you know, hopefully we don't end up level red and we can get our kiddos in the hall at least two times a week. But we would be able to still do some very prescribed instruction in level red with group six or less. That's correct. Uh, so the start of the school year uh, will be a hybrid model. Like I said, Monday, Tuesday for limited capacity for those students. Uh, last name A through K, Wednesday remote, Thursday, Friday, uh, for students with last name L through Z will attend in-person sessions. Uh, we've had several questions on, you know, how long do you stay at a level? Uh, if we're in alert level orange and we move to red, we would move to totally online learning the next Monday. Uh, so if it's Wednesday and on Thursday, the, the governor announces the, the new uh, systems and we are red, uh, we would finish that week, and then Monday, we would all go remote. Now, in the reverse, if we are starting in orange and we go to yellow at some point, uh, the health department is recommending that we stay at that highest level for a period of two weeks, and then we reevaluate with the health department for the possibility of returning to, to full in session. Uh, so, you know, as that happens and that plays out, we'll continue to communicate with you. Uh, you know, we want our kids in school. Uh, we want to do that as safe as possible. I would encourage anyone who missed our Trojan talk with Chad Masters from the health department was very informative and, and laid uh, some protocols and procedures out very clearly for us to follow. Uh, the reason for going to the hybrid model is the alert level orange uh, and limiting the capacity allows us to limit the number of students in the building, uh, allows us to have more social distancing, and it's about those layering of uh, protocols and procedures to keep everyone safe. Um, so, like I said, uh, for the start of the 2021 school year, 
Finley City Schools will be utilizing a hybrid option. As of now. As of now. Yes. And as we know, th <laughs> things can change, yep. and they have changed uh, throughout this summer. Yep. All right. With that being said, we will go ahead and uh, let our guests introduce themselves, and, and we'll have some discussion with our two principals here this evening. Um, I'm Jennifer Tice, and I am principal at Bigelow Hill Intermediate, and I will be starting my sixth year there as uh, the building principal. And I'm Eric Payne. I'm the principal at Northview Primary, and I am starting my seventh year at Northview. The veteran elementary principal, as it were. Hard to believe. Hard to believe. Veterans. We were just the green ones just yes. yesterday, yes. Mr. Payne. <laughs> so I know you guys have, have only been back in, uh, back from summer vacation for I think two weeks now. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's very good to see you guys back. Uh, <laughs> good to be you, back. You've been extremely busy uh, working through plans and what uh, hybrid option and what a remote option would look like in your building. So. Maybe I don't know which one would like to start. Ladies first, maybe, and just talk about uh, that planning <laughs> process and maybe how uh, the, the uh, hybrid model will look like in your building. Um, the planning actually pretty much started at the end of last school year. And so we've had um, different committees working on, you know, what would the online look like, what would hybrid look like, and what would, um, you know, remote look like. So, and those committees were um, consisted of different administrators um, throughout the district as well as uh, educators throughout the district. And now that we've come back, we've tried to take that information. A lot of research was done, um, you know, examining other school districts' um, uh, guidelines and policies and plans, um, research, a ton of research to figure out what's best for our students. So a lot of that's been going on and then just waiting for the guidelines to come out too to give us um, further guidance as we develop these. And so now as we have, we come back um, as administrators and we're meeting, you know, we are trying to get these plans finalized um, um, for our community members. And as Mr. Roth mentioned, you know, what the split would look like. Um, and we are trying to provide as much structure as possible because that's what our our parents are asking for for our students so just those students when they come back on those two days um, we're working on what does that look like um, in the building you know pretty much be a traditional school day for those kids but obviously we'll have to teach them all the guidelines that are in place and how we enter the building how we enter the classroom you know seating um, using the restroom drinking fountains so all of those things are things that we are working through in our buildings. We're trying to stay very um, uh, together across the elementaries to the best of our abilities, but because of you know the constructions of our building and you know where buses drop off and pick up are different, some things will look a bit different, but we're trying to be very consistent with that. Yeah, and like Mrs. Tice said, Dr. Tice mentioned, you know, a lot of our planning came from feedback that we got from our, our administrative team here that was hearing from parents. So we heard structure was very important. So we wanted to make sure that when the kids aren't in the classroom on the two assigned uh, brick and mortar days, that we have some structure built in for them on those three days that they will be remote. Um, trying to also get some incorporation of them being involved in the classroom, whether that means they start their morning in a morning meeting with the students that are in the building, but trying very hard to keep their schedule as normal as possible. Um, those remote days will look a little bit more um, student driven because obviously those teachers are going to be teaching in their classrooms at the same time, but making sure that whatever it is they're working on is an extension of what they've learned in the classroom. It may be preparing them for what they will be learning um, when they return to the classroom on their next days or utilizing our Edmentum and Calvert programs um, to s continue moving them forward in the curriculum. That's one thing that we've been uh, talking a lot about is with, with the shorter amount of time that we have students in our classrooms, we need to be cognizant that they're moving forward when they're at home too. So um, been a, a lot of considerations that we've had to go through um, and the input that we've gotten from the community to, to, to come up with this plan. And I think we're in a pretty good place right now for our students. Now, Eric, you're, you're in a primary building yep. and Dr. Tice is in an intermediate building what are some differences or some 
uh, things that may be different for you that you may have to worry about that your kids have been in school for a few years now, but your kids are just starting. What yeah, are some of your concerns? For sure. We're going to have to spend a lot of time with our, our kindergartners and even our first graders, any of the students that may not have um, a long history of, of using technology because no matter what happens, we need to have the students with the skills to be prepared in the event that we do go red or in the event when they're at home doing their remote learning. So we're going to need to prep them. Um, teachers are going to be working with those students, making sure they can log on, um, navigate the Google Classroom. They can uh, get to the spots they need to be to do the assignments that are assigned. So that's a huge difference. Um, another thing, too, is just the self-care of them. Um, I have a kindergartner myself, and I know that hands like to go in the mouths and toys go in the mouths. So we're going to have to work really hard to make sure students learn um, sanitary ways to clean their hands and washing hands before meals and so on, too. So all of those little components, we need to make sure that our littles um, have that piece together. I'm sure maybe some fourth and fifth graders have that too. But, uh, <laughs> definitely and middle school and high school, yeah. I'm guessing we all have Definitely going to need to focus on those things in the primaries. Mm -hmm. Now, right now we're hybrid, mm -hmm. and, and we say as of, we always used to, as we've been doing this, as of August 11, 2020, we're hybrid. If we would go to red, what would that look like for for at least a snapshot for our, our elementary students, just so, so parents can hear a little bit about that? Well, we really heard that structure was important and for kids to um, be able to see their teachers and get that instruction from their teacher. And this is where a lot of research was coming in, um, examining research on you know what online classes look like at, at this level. And um, what we've kind of come up with at the elementary level is that so all students um, will receive three and a half hours of live or what we call synchronous instruction from their teacher um, and have a very laid out schedule for that day. Um, and then elementary students, in addition to those three and a half hours, would have a 30 minute special as well. Um, so um, they would have four hours of their day, you know, working on the computers with, with a schedule. Um, that does incorporate some transition time um, on that. And then there could be some work that would be above and beyond um, those four hours if it's working on researching for a report, um, working on a project, or doing some silent reading. There, there would be some additional um, work outside of those hours as well, but teachers um, could be available um, for students if they need support. Um, as well. And so we kind of laid out a day. I don't know if you want to share that. Sure. And I'll, I'll say one thing that helped me understand as we were wrapping our heads around what a full online day of learning will look like with as much teacher live teaching is just thinking of it as a normal school day for these students. The only difference being, and it's a big difference, but the teacher is in their classroom teaching and the students are in their homes on the other side of that computer. We want it to be as authentic as it would be if they were in the classroom. So the teacher doing their math lesson like they would normally. Might have to tweak some pieces here to make it more com comparable on, online, but the time that they're going to focus on certain subjects remains the same. We want it to be 90 minutes of reading instruction with all of the components that they would get in the classroom. Um, 30 minutes of writing instruction, 55 minutes of math. With uh, we do a number corner as part of our math program, 15 minutes there, as well as science and social studies alternating 20 minutes and then a 30 minute special. So adding all that up is where we get our three and a half, uh, three and a half hours a day plus the special time. So really that mirrors what we do in a normal school day. It's just the transitions and the the other things that we do at school may not be obviously present in the online model. Mm -hmm. Another thing I think that will be very helpful for our parents is we pulled in a group of teachers um, from various grade levels that have really good um, experience with uh, Google Classroom. And so they have developed a Google Classroom um, for teachers across the entire district. So when parents are trying to support um, their children, everybody's Google Classroom should look the same. Mm -hmm. So, you know, teachers aren't doing things different ways to um, try to help parents with navigating um, the Google Classroom because yeah. we, we heard that that was kind of a frustration when different teachers are doing things different, different ways, and I experienced that with um, my own son. And then one thing that we really want to try um, with following guidelines is to um, 
do some sort of an open house as we get closer to the school year where we're um, again, um, you know, maybe bringing in a parent um, uh, or a guardian from a household um, into the classroom where the teachers can sit down and show um, parents how, you know, to use the Chromebooks, how to access Google Classroom, how to access Progress Book. So that way you're more knowledgeable and could, um, you know, support your teachers better. So that's something that's in the works as well. Yeah. And I, I think finally, the last thing that I would like to add is just the communication. We thrive on knowing what you need. So if you communicate with us and our teachers, we are going to be better able to serve you and what you need at home if you're struggling with the online component. Get a hold of your teacher, get a hold of myself or the others building principals and we will do everything we can to guide you through that. Well, we know it's a difficult setup. It's not what we necessarily expected when we uh, plan to come to school, but we want to make it as best as we can for you and your students. So don't hesitate to email or pick up that phone for us uh, building principals. And then I was to say, how are you going to communicate with parents here prior to the start of school? Uh, I know I can speak for North Union. I'm sure a lot of us have the same, but our, our Facebook page is a great resource to go to, the North, North Union Primary Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Everything that we send home or any emails that we might send out, also go on there. Um, be sure that you've signed up for your final forms. Mm -hmm. um, get all that in there because that email tool is uh, critical for us. And there's also the email distribution page um, that you can sign up for on the Finland City Schools website. Um, all three of those are, are very important. And again, I, individual phone calls are always welcome. Mm -hmm. Anything? The other to? thing, too, um, is we like to oftentimes send out text alerts, like to just yeah. say, hey, check out, you know, the school's Facebook page or look at final forms, check emails. So if you could also sign up for t uh, text alerts. Um, that would be something beneficial as well. So we can send out reminders to you to check those. Mm -hmm. Another one more question. One I don't know if we've got other, other yes. guests waiting. Absolutely. Um, if I'm a parent that we, let's say we go to Red, and I'm a parent that my child is in child care for the day or is in a situation where they can't get on the computer, it's not, it's, that's not going to work for my situation, but I don't necessarily want to go to a full online program, what will that look like for my kiddo? Um, what we are going to be asking for our teachers to do is when they are doing that live teaching is to record those sessions that hopefully they'll have that ability to be able to do that and then they can post those in those Google Classrooms so those families, you know, who can't be in attendance, you know, at that specific time, number one, we're going to ask you to, you know, communicate that to your teachers so they know that and then um, those will be available for um, families to view when it works Thank for you. them as well that's a great question thank you because tend we will be taking attendance i mean we're going to run you know that just like you should we have to go to red we are going to run those days just like the school days and we would take attendance as the students would log on um, so right now we're focusing on hybrid and we're hoping we can at least get them into our buildings two days a week we did want to make certain that we were communicating both both options so anything else as you guys round up thank you so much for that information well, we're looking forward to seeing the kids again uh, very very much life in the halls again mm -hmm. will be a beautiful thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you both for coming in. I know it's been a long day for you, but uh, <laughs> we definitely appreciate the communication and all the hard work you guys have put in uh, putting these plans in place and definitely appreciate uh, that hard work. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, well thank you very much. They'll come in and then you can go out. Okay, so have a good evening. <laughs> um, and while we're transitioning uh, with our administrators, we do have some amazing teachers working on a parent guide, um, sort of a parent video guide to Google. So if that way, we'll, you'll have a resource where you, will, you can see from a student's point of view what they're seeing and navigating, but also, and maybe even more importantly, the parent point of view. So there were, there were some breakdown in communications last spring as to turning assignments in and what that looked like. So we're going to try to clear that up with some tutorials um, for you online. So hopefully that will, that will help clear some of that confusion from last spring. And I believe very soon we'll be sharing a reopening guide for yes. parents yep. uh, here very shortly within, oh, I hate to say, maybe a few within 24, 48 hours. Oh, absolutely. Okay, we'll <laughs> we got it. We parents. got that. All right, I am going to slide down so our new guests can come on in. Welcome. Thank you. Sounds like they answered all of the questions. The studios. Isn't this exciting? Yes. About time you guys have some celebrities here. Right? <laughs> what are you talking about? I show up every week. <laughs>
All right. Well, the good news is I'm off camera now. You can see me a little bit there here. You go. Uh, very excited to have uh, three more guests with us. Uh, we have to my left here our director of Millstream Career Center, Mrs. Pam Hamlin. Uh, at the very end, we have high school principal Ryan Imke and our Principal Donnell Middle School, Mr. Don Williams. So I'd like to thank all three of you for joining thank us you. tonight. You're welcome, yeah. uh, tough act to follow. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking you were thinking that. Dr. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know your teachers, I'm telling you. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Tice and uh, Mr. Payne did a great job uh, explaining what uh, the start of school will look like for their students. Uh, so, Mr. White, I think if we could bring up the Millstream reopening plan, we'll go ahead and start with, with that. And Mrs. Hamlin. Yes. All right, um, Mrs. Hamlin, your start uh, the school year just a little bit different uh, than what uh, Finley City Schools is, just because of the makeup and uh, what a career center uh, entails and involves. So I will turn things over to Mrs. Hamlin and let yes. her explain. Okay. So currently, if we open up under Orange, we're going to be looking just very similar to Finley City, with one exception. Uh, our students were divided by four letter groups. Uh, they'll be, they were assigned whether they've received an email uh, today or tomorrow. Um, they'll be receiving emails, but they'll be placed in either A, B, C, or D group. And the A's and B's will come Monday, Tuesday, and C's and D's will come Thursday, Friday. So very similar model to what Finley City is doing. Uh, where we differ a little bit is when we get to the red level. Um, because our students are hands-on uh, learners, obviously, uh, they're working on credentials and they need hours and so forth. We still need to get them in the classroom. And so with the with the help and direction of the health department, uh, they have advised us as long as we limit our capacity and reduce our capacity from the orange level, we can still bring those students in. And because our class sizes already start a little bit smaller, uh, we're able to do that. So that's one difference. So group A will come Monday, then B will be Tuesday, Thursday will be group C, and D will be on Friday. So a little bit different. Uh, keep in mind that the schools that feed into us, we have kids coming from this year from seven different counties. Uh, certainly poses a little interesting scenario because we know that those counties are all different colors. And so we uh, have been working with our county superintendents uh, along with the health department to try to come up with the best plan for Mill Street. One thing we do want to make note that if students are going to be doing Trojan Academy, they still can come to Mill Street. Uh, they'll come on the schedule as, as you see here. So... We've had some questions lately yep. on can they still come, and yes, they can, okay? And those are the details that if you have questions or we haven't communicated it, we're, some of these, these details we're figuring out as, as the situation unfolds as well. So always just feel free to call, and we'll make certain to clear that Absolutely. up. Absolutely, yes. Our, we're a phone call away. Uh, we, our secretaries and uh, Mr. Shank, our assistant director, we're, we're all available to answer any questions or just to answer any concerns you might have. We had a mom today call and had some safety concerns, and so we just walked through that with her, and that's what we're here for. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll, we'll do our best we can, as we can to try to answer any questions. All right, great. And I know, Mrs. Hamlin, uh, your plan is very consistent with what we're seeing from other career centers throughout the state, correct? Yeah, we are seeing some consistency with everyone doing something a little bit different than yeah. their home schools just because of, of the way that things are made up. Uh, we have taken the lead, I'll be honest with you, in uh, the state of Ohio with some of the schools that we've seen. They're, they're looking at our plan and, and helping uh, maybe push their superintendents along. I mean, we've been blessed because we've had great cooperation from our superintendents and the health department. Some of the counties that we talked to around the state have not had that same cooperation. So we're very lucky to be to be in this situation. All right. Excellent. We definitely appreciate all your hard work uh, in putting that together together. I know it's not easy dealing with the number of superintendents and different districts you have to deal with. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate all that hard work. Uh, we will go ahead and turn it over to... Uh, Mr. Don Williams, who's our principal at Don L. Middle School, and uh, Mr. Williams has been involved in, in reopening plans and putting things together for our middle school. So maybe talk about how that's going for you, Mr. Williams. <laughs> oh, it's going to, we've a uh, lot of collaboration with uh, actually all levels because uh, there are actually a lot of similarities when you look at the plans you see uh, as far as the way uh, some of our days are structured. A uh, little bit different components with the younger kids than the middle school and then moving on to the high school. Uh, but it's nice that, uh, you know, we've not been in this alone, that we've had a lot of people together talking us through, uh, trying to figure out the best options and the best solutions. I think the biggest thing is what we've uh, come to find is we have to be flexible. Things are going to be, certain parts are going to be fluid. 
just because of the different levels. We don't know what to expect. And we tried to put in place consistency. I know with the middle school in particular, trying to uh, have that semblance of a set schedule, what our regular schedule looks like, no matter if, um, you know, our periods, so that if we do fluidly move from, uh, you know, orange to red, or if we go back to yellow and then we're there in person, we, we get to a point where hopefully uh, sooner than later we're back every day, the kids are used to that. They're not having to learn a new schedule. Um, so that was one of the most important things. And also the key is making sure that kids get everything they need, that we have the time allotted, that we know they have face time with their teachers. That's, that's the real key, and that's been the most important thing. Uh, in all this is trying to figure out the best way to get the, you know, the professionals, the experts, our teachers in front of the kids, teaching the kids, and as much as we can get them in person, face to face. So obviously we're starting with the hybrid model. Um, you know, same thing that we're across the board, we're splitting into groups. Um, other than Millstream's a little bit different, but splitting into the groups. Um, we do also realize that we have some flexibility we have to build in. Uh, we can't just strictly go by alphabet. We do Correct. have, um, you know, making accommodations for, you know, households or balancing numbers. So we take that into consideration as well. Yeah, so. we encourage parents to, to call their building principal Absolutely. with their situations, and, and we'll definitely sure. be flexible and willing to work with parents who have unique situations yeah. that the Monday, Tuesday model may not work for them, even though it's their part of the alphabet. So right. right. We encourage you to contact your building principals with those issues. All right, Mr. Imke, at our high school, maybe uh, the most challenging uh, building with just because of sheer numbers Certainly. of students, uh, but maybe talk about the process you've yeah, been involved yeah, with. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I want to echo what Mr. Williams has said, and, and I think uh, Dr. Tice, uh, Mr. Payne did a great job as well, but explaining that, you know, we've had a lot of collaboration uh, throughout this process. The district teams that have put, put together with teachers, staff members, uh, taking feedback from surveys that were sent to families. Uh, meeting with individual groups of teachers, uh, as well as e even students, uh, having conversations with our students at the high school level about what their experiences were in the spring, and then bringing that into how we can best meet their needs uh, moving forward here in the fall. You know, we, we, we are proud of the efforts that our students and teachers did in the spring, uh, but we're looking forward to how we can improve that, that rigor and how we can uh, have that high education that we want to offer at Finley City Schools. Uh, especially at the high school level. Uh, so we appreciate that collaboration and that work. Um, you know, I talked about, um, you know, our students, and, and we want our students to be able to see our teachers. Uh, that connection, that relationship is so, so important. And we know that as educators, we know that as families, uh, that, that our teachers and our students can connect, and that this creates that strong learning environment. Uh, so when you think about our hybrid model, uh, in a hybrid model, we are, as you have stated, uh, dividing the alphabet A to K, L to Z. Uh, and, you know, that huge challenge that we have at the high school with the size, the sheer size, that will allow us to, to reduce that capacity and create uh, that social distancing necessary uh, to create a safe learning environment. Uh, on those hybrid days, uh, our students will be following a traditional uh, bell schedule that we have done over the course of the last two or three years. Uh, that allows our, our partnership with Millstream to work very uh, extremely fluid uh, for our students to attend their Millstream uh, classes as well as work with teachers that we share between Millstream and Finley High School. Um, we also uh, anticipate our students uh, being actively learning uh, on those remote days as well, uh, but still having the opportunity to interact with their teachers, to get feedback from their teachers, uh, to be able to support them through the learning process. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's important. We have some challenges ahead of us, uh, but without a doubt, there's some excitement. I had the opportunity uh, last week to meet with a group of our teacher leaders and to hear the energy, the excitement, the enthusiasm that they have uh, for wanting to get back to school, for wanting to be able to uh, work with their students. It, it really rejuvenated me, and, and I'm excited uh, to have that opportunity. So just to clarify, when we are in the, the, the hybrid model, we know that we'll have them in school, and then they'll have the three. If we would have to go to red, um, which I always reiterate, we all hope we don't have to do that, there would be that structure, that routine, Absolutely. that they would be in, in their classroom via the computer, a lot like what Mr. Payne described at the elementary Absolutely. level. Absolutely. And one of the advantages um, 
Meg Simon, who is uh, the principal at Glenwood Middle School, uh, we have built into the middle school schedule a home base, and it's a 20-minute period. And traditionally, it has been at the end of the day. For both buildings, it's at the beginning of the day. So even in the hybrid model, um, we're going to start. That's going to be the very first thing is home base. So the kids in the classroom who are there physically in the classroom, the teacher is also going to uh, log in the students who are at home online those days. So the students who are not physically in school on those hybrid days, they are going to be checking in. So uh, it, a few different things that does. It's a good check-in start to the day for those kids who are online who are not present. But also eventually, uh, these kids are all going to be together and in the same home base. So there's that connection because the social is, is a big piece. So that home base is a time they can stay connected with their teacher, even though they don't see them physically every day of the week, even with the hybrid they're going to be connecting with their teacher every single day. Um, and that'll be remote, same thing. Uh, every kid will be logging in uh, first thing in the morning. They're going to start their day with home base. And one thing I would add, uh, too, in, in terms of the high school level, you know, we talk about that structure, that consistency. We think that is important. And one thing that I did want to share tonight is we have those ninth graders making that transition to Finley High School. And we want to be able to, regardless of what model we are in to start the school year, be able to make them feel connected, uh, be able to make them feel part of Finley High School. Uh, so we have actually submitted uh, to the health department uh, a plan for uh, working through having an opportunity to have a uh, uh, orientation type process to hopefully be able to get some of our ninth grade students into Finley High School. Uh, get them familiar with the building in small groups, practicing all of uh, the social distancing and, and um, those protocols. But we want to be able to make them feel comfortable uh, on September 8th when they start their school year at Finley High School. And that, that's something that we're working very hard to. Uh, kudos to uh, Mrs. Sebenek, uh, one of our assistant principals, who's worked very hard on that plan. Uh, but we, uh, we had put out some tentative dates, uh, but we... Um, with the school year being pushed back, we are uh, uh, will be communicating hopefully in the next week or so uh, what those exact dates will be. But uh, we want to be able to have the opportunity for ninth graders to to start to make that relationship with their teachers, but also feel comfortable about where their classes are and uh, moving around the building and things. So um, you know that goes along kind of with that theme of, of of some structure and consistency that we're really trying to. All right. Uh, greatly appreciate uh, all the work you three have put into this. Uh, I know it's not uh, the way we would like to start the school year, but I think it's positive that we can get our kids in at least two days a week to, to get in front of in front of their teachers and have that uh, sure. positive role model in front of them. I appreciate, uh, I know the three of you have worked very hard on these plans and uh, continue to be flexible and uh, very easy to work with. So. Uh, we would encourage you, if you have questions, uh, you have students in any of these three buildings, to, to contact uh, the building so you can uh, get the answer you're looking for. So uh, unless any of you have any closing comments or any last thoughts, we will dismiss you for the evening. Uh, just in terms of the communication, uh, you know, Finley High School counselors are back, and, and I know uh, that uh, they would love the opportunity to, to communicate as well as our assistant principal team because I know... Uh, when you get to high school and you start thinking about CCP and you start thinking about scheduling process and things like that, uh, there might be a lot of questions, and, and we can certainly offer the opportunity to communicate with you and help you in any way possible. And Mr. Imke, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I know a hot topic is athletics. Uh, do you want to touch base on, on where we're at? Sure. That's a great question. Uh, uh, I cannot say enough about Mr. Wairau and, and our athletic department. Uh, I, I've been so proud of how we've been able to welcome back our fall athletes, but do so in a safe manner. Um, and not only just athletics, but also our band started this week. And uh, Mr. Wilson and his staff have done a tremendous job in terms of safely welcoming our students back, getting them participating in, in an extracurricular activity. Uh, so exciting to see kids' faces back on campus. Uh, you know, we still uh, continue to work through uh, what, what athletics is going to look like this fall. Uh, we're hoping for some further guidance um, later this week, hopefully on Thursday, um, from, from Governor DeWine. Uh, but again, I've been very proud of our staff, our coaches, and, and again, our athletes of, of being able to come in and, and follow those protocols, do so safely, but still be able to participate in extracurriculars. Okay. Great. Thank you for the update. All right, we appreciate your time and hope you guys can enjoy your evening.
Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming up. All right, I'd like to thank our guests this evening. Uh, all five of our, our, our principals there uh, do a great job for us, as do all our principals uh, throughout the district. So their hard work is greatly appreciated. Uh, just a reminder that uh, we, we will be starting in a hybrid model, uh, and we will stay in that hybrid model until we move a level up or down. If we move up to a red level uh, the first Monday after moving up, uh, we would start that model and if we do, do move down to, to yellow, uh, it would be 14 days uh, that we would stay in our current remote option before we would move to traditional. So we will continue to communicate uh, all the options. We'll continue to communicate uh, any changes. Uh, we'll continue to put uh, information on our website and try to be as transparent as possible. Uh, we are excited to get, uh, get the students back in the building. Uh, even in a limited capacity, we think it's important that... Uh, they get to be in the buildings and, and, and be in front of their teachers. Absolutely. So uh, our teachers are excited. Our staff is excited. Uh, we are looking forward to a great school year and, and looking forward to uh, the day where we can have students and staff interacting five days uh, with a full traditional Absolutely. schedule. Um, and as Mr. Roth mentioned, we are working on um, finalizing now that we have um, plans finalized and the recommendations from the health department. Um, two documents, one a little a um, bit of an overview, a snapshot of what we discussed today that will be going out soon. And then we also have a more comprehensive guide that we're making certain that all of what we put together is supported by the health department's recommendations. And once we're certain that that's completely up to date because things have been very fluid, we will get that out as well. So we'll have one that's a, a bit of a, a bulleted point, um, quicker, to, to, quick, quicker to look at and understand so that you can reflect on the conversation this evening, and then one that's more thorough, which also will include the actual health department document. So you can see how we planned and, and developed our, our options for our kids. And we will continue to update our, our FAQ page. Yep. Uh, I know, and I apologize, we have fallen a little bit behind on keeping up with that, but we do know we have some questions submitted uh, that may not have been answered tonight that... Uh, we will put those answers on the right. FAQ page on our website as soon as possible. And a lot of those should be covered, if not in the, the, the quick guide to restart that we're going to be putting out, right. but in the more comprehensive, which is one reason we've held off a little bit, because I think a lot of those will be covered, if not tonight, in one of those two documents. And then we'll follow up from there. Okay. All right. Lots tonight. Uh, lots tonight. Exciting. Uh, a lot more communication will follow this evening uh, in th throughout the weeks here, here to come. Uh, we appreciate your time, and we encourage you to continue watching Trojan Talks. We will uh, be here again next week. We'll announce our guest uh, sometime later in the week or early next week and, and discuss any changes or updates uh, that happen uh, between now and next Tuesday evening. But we thank you for your time, appreciate your support, and as always, Go, go Trojans! Trojans.